maybe a good time to come into the show too would have been right when Larry started shouting his mouth off in Brooklyn Park and I knew something was not going right. I could see the attitude change in him and I was pissed. I, rem- oh, I remember, yeah. I don't think I've ever told this, but at Brooklyn Park Armory show, we had just did the Anoka Armory, big sellout, okay, with Luscious Larry. Then we did... Uh, that Champion duel, Legion. Champion Legion with Eddie Sharkey, the dual event, which I had Larry. I brought, I decided who the NWF matches were. So I said, let's bring in Steve and Larry because I thought it would be more on par with what Eddie was doing. And he'd appreciate that kind of a match. Knowing now that Eddie wanted more of us, <laughs> I didn't know it though at the time. You know, he wanted the kids. He didn't want the, he has his guys. He didn't need them, right? He wanted the clay he could mold. Right. Um, so anyways, and then we get to Brooklyn Park, and now by this time, Luscious Larry thinks this is all, all these people are coming to these events because of him. And so he is now barking orders at everybody, telling everybody what to do, yelling and, and everything. And I even got into him and said, what, you know, and he starts barking at me. And I remember going up to Steve Engstrom, and I said, Steve, who does he think he's yelling at here? Whose show does he think this is? He's like, just, 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 just take it easy. Come, I know, I know. He's just, he's just worried. He just wants to make sure everything goes good. You know, just, just don't, don't, don't let it get to you. Don't. Steve's trying to, you know, calm me down because I was pissed. Because I'm looking at this like, who the hell does he think he is? That's why, way I was thinking. And that's when I realized, Luscious Larry, something's going on here. He's not the guy that I knew when we first, when I first came in and I got him over as Luscious Larry in, in October. He's now turned into this, this invincible guy that he thinks he's the main attraction here. He thinks he's the second coming of Hulk Hogan. He honestly did. And it, it, was, it was, I hate to say it me, but it was how well I booked him. It went to his head. What he didn't realize is the attraction, he's part of it. But he's not all of it. So, and he found that out when he broke away from us and tried to do his own thing. He had 10 people show up at some bar cart. So he luscious Larry learned the hard way, folks, that, that you need the league that has the history, that has the, the four years on cable television leading up to this, or three years, whatever it was. And, and Larry didn't get that. He just thought it was, you know, he, he learned the hard way. Let's just say that. And You drew 10 people at his show, and half of those were probably his friends that, he comp tickets to. Well, it was August 23rd. There were three wrestling events going on that day. The NWA was in town for the first time in 40 years, and they were at the Met Center. You had us at the and you had us at the Anoka Armory, and you had Larry's NCWA going on in some place in Ramsey, I think it was, some bar, or maybe it was Blaine. So. Ten people show up to his event, and this was from Steve Engstrom telling me. So Steve's not going to lie to me, because at that time he was with kind of them, and he's telling this is how many people showed up. We had about fifty, which, or no, it was no, it was about seventy, just around seventy, I think, is what we had in there. Yeah, which wasn't too bad considering the NWA was going on in town. Now, had the NWA not happened, who knows what we would have had. You know, but yeah. 